one. Empty. Empty. What's up, everybody? On today's episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast, we got a lot of voicemails that we're going to get through. So, going to listen to those and uh, maybe talk about a few other random things. So, all this and more on the first Black History Month episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. I say Black O Podcast. I don't know. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Blackout. Cool, here we go. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 149 of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. I'm Jared. What's up? I'm Jake. And we are back and at it again. Jake, how was your week, man? Is it busy? As yeah. always, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, just just insanely busy at work. Lots of things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, won another award at work, so that was pretty cool. Ah, congratulations! Didn't expect that. Yeah. Was um, it was it like was it like the best the best animation project or the best uh, layout on a uh, marketing nah. uh, trifold? No. No. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't do that. But yeah, um, no, it was just cool. Just uh, we, the company won a lot of stuff, uh, so I guess I was part of that team um, We're cool. doing that particular thing. So good job. Yeah, um, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, but that just busy man. Uh, kids, school, work, trying to figure out what to do for, for spring break with these kids coming up next month. So yeah, that. You know, just all the, the usual family issues, family problems, mm-hmm. family, uh, you know, shenanigans. Family That's fun. <laughs> family fun. It's always fun in this side of the, yeah. the neighborhood. That's but fun. Other than that, yeah, other than that, it was cool, man. How How's it going in your, your neck of the woods? Man, you know, just uh, busy as always. You know, just family things, kids in school, you know, I mean, just... The regular stuff. That's about mm-hmm. it. Um, yep. You know, the regular stuff. That's about it. Yeah, I was uh, finally able to get hooks, rubs, and spices into this one store that I've been. You know, we've been doing. Uh, you know, like the long we we had done the longest game of phone and voicemail tag uh, and text tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can imagine. I uh, was finally able to get it done. So it's another store up here that has two locations, but. They're locations um, that are in different places than the other uh, uh, stores that I've already sold through. So uh, these are going to go into one is like a more established neighborhood, um, right. you know, with a wide range of people that live there, wide age range of people that live there. Uh, and then another one is sort of more downtown centralized uh, in one of, I guess, sort of like an outdoor what do you call it? Like an outdoor, uh, outdoor mall, uh, you know, where they get some foot traffic between festivals mm-hmm. and mall traffic, et cetera. So that's good. Yeah. And, and this store is seen as, you know, one of those stores that's sort of like a specialty grocery store when it comes to having like things that you may not find at a regular grocery store, but they also, uh, you know, have regular groceries and then they have a lot of stuff that is local. Like they're big on, you know, they're big on buy local shop local. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a really good you know opportunity to hop into there and see how it sort of goes there. Um, and right. been reached out been reached out by you know been reached out to by some more people um, you know in different parts of the country. So I'm going to look into that you know as it comes. But yeah, just that. And then uh, and then I did have an appearance this week on the local uh, Fox news affiliate mm-hmm. uh, or not Fox news, but you know, Fox TV station affiliate and, you know, doing their, doing one of their daytime shows, uh, and did a recipe for the trash can nachos as a Super Bowl recipe. Sweet. So, so that was a great time. Got to take my daughter this time around, um, to watch the show and to help me out. And she was very helpful, um, and get me prepped great. for the show. So yeah, it was a good time. Trash can nachos came out, you know, pretty, pretty darn great um flavor wise and also the appearance wise on tv they said it it really popped so Sweet. yeah so um it was a good deal man it's a good deal so oh man so I, obviously we didn't have a show last week but mm-hmm. uh so i i think i mentioned my kid had a one first place in the science fair 
yeah. some time ago. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So he had like his district or regional fair mm-hmm. up in Dallas last weekend. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something, man. So after the first science fair, mm-hmm. we were wondering. We were like, okay, we need to take the. We need to take our project home, but no, teachers were like, eh, "We'll keep it here. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna ship it off to the next location when that happens." Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Day before or two days before the science fair happens, mm-hmm. this regional fair. What do you know? The school contacts us and says, "Hey, uh, we misplaced your kids' science fair as well as all the other kids' science fair projects." Wow. So, um, they're going to need to stay after school the next day so they could redo the whole thing. Oh my I'm gosh. Like, I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. No, um, like, how does this even happen? So, I had to scramble. I uh, emailed the teacher and I'm like, no, nah, we'll just redo it at home because I got all the yeah. materials, I got all the stuff here. And it's just like super irresponsible. And, on their part to yeah yeah to, to, to misplace it stuff. I, and and I I know I I told them I was like are you sure you want to leave this at school mm-hmm. you, you you don't want us to take this home mm-hmm. they're like no we got it we'll keep it here nah that didn't happen wow. so we had to scramble got it done redone mm-hmm. same same project but obviously you know. My kid was completely out of it. He didn't want to have nothing to do with the science fair project at oh, yeah. all. So, so he didn't advance. It's cool. He didn't care, mm-hmm. you know. But wow. man, I was just amazed by. It. There was this one little girl, mm-hmm. little uh, Indian girl, um, mm-hmm. and she was winning every single thing. Oh yeah, every single thing at the fair, man. And I was surprised. I wasn't surprised, but. It was all girls that practically won, maybe mm-hmm. two boys that, that actually won at the mm-hmm. whole thing. Yeah. And it was just a it was it was just it was good to see that, that many girls uh you know are kinda doing things in science. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But at the same time <laughs> I I was just like kinda over it as far as like the school losing the kids. Yeah. Like yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, you know, I think I think what we, I don't know, what we always, I think sometimes it's hard to, hard to realize it's, I think girls are a lot more mentally mature in some, you know, at, at that stage, um, you know, maybe like that nine, 10, 11, you know, 12 year old range somewhere in there, you know, they, they, I don't know, for some reason, it just seems like girls are a little bit smarter but that doesn't mean that, you know, a boy can't do it, you know, and that oh, doesn't yeah. mean a girl can't do it. Uh, uh, but I think I think their mind is just a little bit further along uh, for some reason. Um, and and yeah, so I guess I'm not totally surprised. Um, uh, and I, I mean, I think it's a good thing. And, and one way or the other, I mean, you know, the science fair project is always sort of a balance of, you know, how much a kid actually does compared to how much the parent does. Uh, or to help them out. So in some cases, it may have been that too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool. But then again, you know, I can, I can totally understand on your part, like, man, I mean, y'all, y'all have already, you know, put in the work, done the research, did the project, printed all the materials, presented the whole thing, you know, completed it. And then now you got to basically, you know, almost yeah. do all that over again, even though, like you said, yeah. you still had the info. It's a good thing you didn't delete all that stuff. Uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, Cause I was I was thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about it. But they should get like automatic ages for them losing the project. So yeah, for sure. And that's, that's and the I other feel. thing, yeah, the other thing is like, yeah, it's definitely an irresponsible thing on the school's part because, you know, and and I'm sure they've done that before. I'm sure that's the thing they probably do what like every year where they just like okay, the mm-hmm. science fair winners will just move your stuff on over here. But like, how does that you know I don't know how does that ball get dropped? I don't know. Like, got to you got you got to have somebody, the science teachers or whoever it is, you know, basically, you know, since you know it's going to this contest in a week or two, you know, put all the stuff in a box, uh, you know, in its own specific box, make sure it's packed well, whatever it is, um, uh, and and tagged to go along with the specific project mm-hmm. uh, to get there, um, you know, and maybe it's one of these things, man. Maybe you know, back in the day, some parents didn't you know some parents took it home 
and forgot pieces or something like that, um, you know, for the next stage of the, of the, of the fair. And so they're like, Oh, we'll just keep them all from now on and we'll ship them, blah, blah, blah. So they don't ever have to go back Mm -hmm. home. I don't know, man, but that's, that's horrible, man. It's, it's just a lot of extra stuff to have to do all over again. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to, shout out to your boy for doing well enough to pass through the school level, you know, get to that next level up. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's a good thing. It's, it's a good thing. My, my son did the science fair last year. Um, and I think he had a fairly good project, even though I think it was sort of a hard project to, Mm -hmm. to, uh, prove, um, at this time of year, but he did well. Um, but yeah, this year he was like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to do one again. So what was, what was your, what was your kid's project on? Uh, on how different liquids, um, react to Alka-Seltzer to kind of like ignite and mm-hmm. make a bottle rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a recap for everybody who didn't know. That's cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, well, I know I, that's interesting. I remember you telling me the results and me telling my kids and they're like, what? So what? what is the be- what is the most reactive liquid to Alka-Seltzer to make a bottle uh, rocket like actually react? Su- surprisingly, fruit punch. Yeah. <laughs> so he did fruit punch, milk, soda, which he thought because it was already kind of carbonated. Yeah. Yeah, and water as his base. But mm-hmm. milk actually went pretty high, but it took a long time to ignite. Okay. Yeah. And fruit punch actually went the highest? Uh yeah, fruit punch went the high, went the highest. That's sort of why. how high how high did the rocket you? Uh punch? the fruit punch one went over thirteen feet. Oh wow, yeah. that's way higher than I thought. Wow. Yeah, I mean the soda went about twelve. Milk went about, I guess, close to ten, somewhere around nine, ten feet. And water averaged out, out at about, I don't know, maybe five or six feet. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. You need, you know, I guess. And it's funny because when you said milk, like. You wouldn't think that milk would have a reaction without yeah. the salsa like that, but yeah, I guess it exactly. does. It just took a long time because we didn't even think it was going to like do ignite anything. or burst anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Well, slick, slick, slick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, shout out to him. Uh, you know, hope he, hope he uh, wants to do it again next year, but <laughs> if he was over yeah. it after this, he may not I think, want to. I think it's like mandatory. They have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. This was, ours were voluntary I think the teacher last year I think she had it as a part of their fifth grade project but this teacher this year was like here's information they don't have to do it um, you know they don't have to do it etc so so his teacher last year was more of a science like a science minded uh, mm-hmm. you know teacher so that's why I think she made it mandatory but cool cool well all right. Well, uh, from that science to the science of voicemails, is that even a science? Probably not. But, but uh, here we go. I know we have quite a few voicemails uh, to listen to this time around. Um, and yeah, so why don't you go ahead and tell the people where they could leave us a voicemail, and then we'll get into them someone. All right. Voicemails three eight five three B L A K P C or three eight five three two five two five seven two. Give us a call. Tell us about you. Tell us about your wonderful life. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, here we go. First one up. Three, two, one. Brothers, it's me, Mrs. Diesel 99, y'all. I just cooked some fried some chicken with some cooked ribs and spices. Shut up. Let me tell ya. Oh, my God. But anyway, did y'all see power? This was a really good episode, y'all. <laughs> Who y'all think shot? And it wasn't coming on this episode. It wasn't coming. It was a really good episode. I think it was Sasha, Ramona, Bill Cosby, uh, Claire Hustable probably did it. Or the girl from Family Matters that went upstairs and never came back. Uh, yeah, I think one of them, them shot and killed her. Hold on a second. Yeah. Or Juice Box girlfriend came back. Yep. Okay, then. That's all I wanted. Um... I tell y'all. That's about it, really. I tell y'all about the other stuff later. Uh, how I, uh, I have to tell you about it. <laughs> but I have to get to eat my 
much he can press me. Alright. Did I say this next to see me? I mean, I'm drinking mango pineapple vodka and stuff. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> she getting lathered up uh, to watch that pirate episode and eat that chicken. That's they call it lathered up, man. I think I can't remember who. I heard that from what radio host I heard that from, but they're like, you know, when you start drinking and getting all, you know, getting a little too deep into the bottle, you're getting yourself all lathered up for whatever. So that's funny. So yeah, it sounds like she has a lot of, uh, a lot of suspects for the power episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. It's so funny. And even wow. people from random TV shows that are not even closely associated with this. Oh man. Uh, Kayla, you're great. All right, here we go. Next up. Three, two, one. Yo. This Mrs. Diva again. Nine nine. I said eating chicken with the hook rubber spices on. It was so good. Okay. Y'all, so today I'm driving to go see my dad. And I'm driving one way on this you know, on the street. I see this 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 truck flying past me. He hits this car, boom, boom, bam, bam, boom. I said, oh, Lord, because I can see the whole thing in the rear view mirror. So I turn around, and when I get up there, the the truck that was speeding, that ran into the minivan, I don't know what's going on. So as I get out of my car, I run to the truck first, and you see these two men just fight. <laughs> and people are... Like, just standing there, like, ma'am, ma'am, get away from the truck because they may have a gun there and they're fighting. So I'm like, y'all go check on the people in the minivan. The minivan is on, it's just, it's just messed up. Come to find out, the man got out of, who got hit, got out of his minivan and beat the dog shit out of the guy that hit. Mm. Okay. Oh, my. So here I am saying, no, no, don't go near that truck. They're fighting each other because maybe one of them told the other one, not to drive so fast. Y'all, I didn't told the people not to go to the truck, but really it was the guy in the minivan that got hit, pooping up on the guy. So the guy jumped out the window and said, man, you ain't got to hit me and runs off. So then the police came and they found them and uh, I left. So nobody was hurt. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. <laughs> okay, there's a continuation of that. So, Maybe we can hold your, we can hold our, our response until after this. Okay, this is Mr. D again, and I'm pretty sure I got cut off, but look, long story short, I'm telling people not to go near the, 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 the truck that has hit the minivan. I'm telling them to go to the minivan to make sure the people in there are all right, because it was a minivan, I thought it was a bunch of people, but it wasn't. The guy didn't, from the minivan and jumped out and confronted the guy who hit him who was trying to get away and beat I mean when I tell you he beat that man merciless he stomped on that man head he kicked that man in the booty he dropped <laughs> topped him I mean and they were both fighting and then the guy said I've had enough of you beating on me I'm gonna call the police so somebody called the police and they like you finna call the police and you hit this man and so it was just crazy I felt so bad because I was telling people not to go near the the truck where the two people were fighting because I thought they was in there together. But, uh, no. So that was my, um, Martin Luther King day here in Memphis where Dr. King got killed many, many years ago. So, yeah. Come by y'all. All right, then. Bye. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kayla. What, so what, how was, how was, what is your reaction to, to that story? That, I wow. Well, I'm glad you didn't get involved. Mm-hmm. For one, uh, that sounds pretty sounds pretty crazy. Um, I'm sure the video will be released online sometime soon. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that that's amazing. I, I've never witnessed uh, anybody get well. No, I I, I guess you could kind of say eh, road rage or just uh mm-hmm. what do you call it uh yes yeah, maybe it right i guess it's a form of road rage you know it's post accident i mean nobody knows what how, how the how the accident was caused maybe it was like something with road rage i don't know but yeah that, that must have been a sight to see 
Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the wild thing is it's on a one-way street, you know? Uh, so who knows if it was a cross street. Obviously, we didn't see that. And she didn't tell us about that. <clears> but yeah, um, who knows there? But yeah, one-way street, man. You know, there's... You're, you're only expecting, you know, sort of like traffic to be flowing from a certain direction, you know, in a certain way. And yeah, if the, this person was like speeding around her, um, you know, to pass her, to go on ahead. And yeah, man, it's just, just dangerous. It's just wild. Uh, and people are just crazy, man. You, you don't know, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's why my wife always tells me sometimes not to honk at people because you don't know what, if they're going to like. You know, people these yeah. days like shoot at people or hop out their car and chase you down. Like, yeah. it's crazy, man. It's people crazy yeah, in these a streets. Little girl got shot. Uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago here from Case of Road Rage. Somebody pulled out a gun and started shooting on the highway. Oh, that's so sad, man. It, it's, it's Luckily, not even she worth it. survive. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not even worth it because you're just trying to get to, from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. So, is it really worth it to go like over the top? I mean, I think I think sometimes honking is okay because sometimes people don't even know that they did what they did. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people are fully aware that they did what they did. Um, you know, so, but, 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 uh, you know, yelling and I guess hopping out the car or shooting at people is crazy. Okay, yeah, so here we go. Let's just, we'll just move on to the next voicemail. All right, three, two, one. Podcast y'all cousin. This is correspondent, Mr. Steven 99. Y'all, it's 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and I'm watching <clears throat> the latest Tower episode. Y'all, I'm tired, okay? Terry shot his daddy. It had to be. And, and I can see how this going to turn out. I see how it's going to turn out. Watch what I say. And Tasha gonna take the fall for it. Because it, it, Tyree's crazy. There's something wrong with that boy. But anyway, <laughs> I'm up washing my hair. Um, yeah, I'm doing a natural thing and it's grown pretty long. But, anyways, I decided to give y'all a call because I'm about to listen to y'all latest episode, I think 148, while I'm up this morning. So, I shall call y'all back. In a little bit. Okay, then. Good day. <laughs> okay, so two minutes. Catch up with power. Yeah, I know, man. She is like the ultimate power reviewer. Um, <laughs> you know, the real talk power reviewer. Just because, yeah, I haven't watched it. That that's HBO, right? No, uh, stars. Stars. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know we, we've we talked started, about this. So. Yeah, we started. Uh, like I, I think I've gotten. I've gotten spoiled by like a lot of these uh you know streaming services where you could just binge watch mm-hmm. everything. It's not like when we grew up you gotta you gotta wait for the next week to catch the next episode or you know, yeah. even nowadays you gotta wait week to week to catch an episode. But yeah. Yeah, we started uh watching the first season of Power. Yeah, and we're like a, quite a few episodes in and then something else comes out and then it's like, Oh, we gotta watch that. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm I'm definitely gonna have to catch up. Because it's good. I hear it's yeah. real good. Yeah, yeah. Apparently I, it's real good. <laughs> I'd I'd love to watch it, but I don't have stars on any of my streaming services. So so Yeah. I'll just have to uh you know, I'll just have to <laughs> to uh just smile and nod whenever you talk about it. So <laughs> so yeah, whenever you give your your reaction to her reviews. So here we go. Um, but yeah, I heard it was a good show, and it, I mean, by all accounts, it sounds like a pretty great show. So, so yeah, maybe one day I'll be able to catch it when they put it on Netflix. Maybe one day, hopefully, Netflix listening, Hulu, maybe crossing fingers. All right, here we go. Next voicemail three, two, one. Yo, this is Mr. Steve and This is two Ooh. minutes later, by the way. <laughs> Yo, you know, I got a little part time job because you know. I work like 15 million jobs, you know, doing Lyft and Uber, you know, at the airport sometimes. And I was doing Uber Eats last year, but I got lazy. Why should I have to keep getting out of my car and get back in and crank it up and all that good stuff? Because I'm lazy. But they're really robbing the Uber Eats people. 
people down here. And uh, it's sad. And one person's car got stolen. The other person got pistol whipped. Mm. He forgot to lock his car when he went to go deliver the food. And they got in his back seat and hid. And then, yeah, pistol whipped him and took his car. And, you know, and then I think it's just crazy. So I'm going to stay in the house. I'm going to stay in the house. I'm going to continue uh, marketing my t-shirt line. Shout out, RodaPearl.com. <laughs> R-Y-D-A-A, the payroll. Reaching your dreams and ambitions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shopify online. Because this shit crazy. Okay, then, well, I'm trying to do nothing but drink coffee this morning. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Shout out to Ride at Apparel. And that's wild, man. Um, I've thought about doing, you know, like the Uber Eats or Grubhub, you know, one of those. Mm-hmm. I've thought about that before. Um, but then when I saw the, I don't know, I guess it's different in every area, obviously, in every part of the country, in every city. Um, but then when I saw the reviews of people who had done that job uh, for X amount of time or who still do that job, it just seems like it's so much more wear and tear on your vehicle um, than oh, yeah. you actually yeah. make. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't yeah. seem like it's worth it, even though it's weird because like in your mind, you're like, OK, yeah, here's this extra bit of change in my pocket that I could use for X, Y, Z. Uh, but then, you know, you may have to get an oil change quicker, uh, you know, because you've hit your three to five thousand miles. You know, you may have to get this or that fixed on your car you know, a lot quicker than you may would have. So it's probably just taking that money right back. So, so it was a good service. I think they're good services. They obviously offer good services, uh, for people who, for some reason can't, you know, go and pick up the food, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I decided against it. So I don't know, but that's her stories are pretty wild about people getting robbed or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of nuts, man. Nope. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, I wouldn't do it. Nah, it's. I mean, just just for me, probably just not for me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing because like you think about pizza delivery drivers and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. it's almost the same thing, you know, because they're delivering something that you purchase from one place to the other, um, you know. But in this case, you know, it, it's funny because reading reading some of the reviews of of drivers. They're like, you know, I had to drive 10 miles, you know, to go pick up the food. Uh, and when I got there, I had to wait, you know, 10, 15 minutes for the food to be done, even though the, it was supposed to be ready when I got there. And so then I had to drive, you know, 10 miles back the other way, 15 miles back the other way to drop it off. Uh, and by that time, you know, I had missed my I had missed my delivery window or the food wasn't as hot as it normally is. <coughs> And, you know, so Mm -hmm. that affected my tip, that affected my feedback. And, like, the feedback ratings that customers give you apparently affect how many jobs you get or the better jobs or, you know, et cetera. So it's it's a lot, man. It's it's a lot mixed in. And, you know, it's a timing thing, you know, with food, uh, trying to get it there hot and, you know, so it's fresh and all this stuff. It's sort of crazy, man. It's, I, I don't know, man. I don't. It just became, like you said, you know, it's not so for you. It just became one of those things where I was like, nah, I, I can't do that. I can't do that in good conscience. So, anyway. Anyway, all right. So, another voicemail from Kayla. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, y'all. This is Memphis Diva 99. Guess who in the car with me? Say hey, Mom. Hi. This is my <laughs> Talking all the time and having little talks and stuff. Is there anything you want to say, Mom? Adios. My mom says adios, y'all. 
Mama Diva on the show. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You got, got the mama of the divas. Yes, indeed. Of the Memphis divas. So, yeah. Uh, did you see the last Godzilla? Yes. What'd you, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, what, I thought it was cool. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you when you get these like Godzilla type movies, you don't uh, get like a really good story or anything like that it's mm-hmm. you're mostly just waiting for the action mm-hmm. um but you know it, it kind of gave a, a pretty cool explanation of where or the world that godzilla kind of came from oh yeah you know and how he was like worshipped and, and everything well, obviously he's like he's godzilla he was like a god so, yeah yeah so it, that was, it was pretty cool um, you yeah. know it's worth the watch that's cool that's cool yeah i did not see it but you know i don't know is it is it one of those things where like if you've seen you know several godzilla movies you've basically seen them all like is that essentially uh no i mean if you compare in like the godzilla movies from like the 60s 70s 80s mm-hmm. you know even the one like the one with matthew matthew roger the, yeah i mean they're all different in a sense mm-hmm. but okay. this one this one kind of took the ones from like the seventies with like King Ghidorah and uh, you know Martha, and they just threw them all in one movie. Okay, you know, so it was it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty good as far as like uh, just some action movie. Yeah, hey, yeah, I right, cool. Yeah, I I haven't seen. I I do want to see because they had some interesting characters in it outside of regular Godzilla. But man, eh, I'll see it mm-hmm. eventually one day. That's cool. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And then she talked about some of her favorites. So sounds like a, sounds like a surprise to Kayla. You had um, had the Invisible Man. You had Superman. You had Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you know, depending on which version of Superman, I guess. Uh, you know, and Wonder Woman. Yeah, all some good mm-hmm. shows. All some good shows. Yep, I'd say that. So that'd be interesting to hear the rest of their conversation and what else, <laughs> you know, what other science fiction movies or topics they got into. So, yeah. So very interesting. Well, uh, I hope your dad is, uh, doing better and, um, yeah. So, um, you know, keep praying for him <clears throat> to get on the better end of that. So mm-hmm. here we go. Thank you for that. Kayla. Those are all from Kayla. Thank you. But then we have one more, uh, from someone else. So I don't know who this is. Um, so yeah, so let's find out. Three, two, one. What up, H Tag Blackout Podcast? It's your <laughs> East Coast correspondent, the homie, Jay Del Negro of the hey. Don't Judge Me Podcast. And What's I gotta up? say, the conversation about intersectionality is coming off to a strong start. Part of your discussion made me think about something. And here's a question I pose to both you guys. Through your school age years, and I'm talking, you know, uh, first grade on to 12th grade, what was that one shit, that one outfit that you had that you knew mm. you would kill them with? For example, I'll tell you mine. 95, I had this Columbia short set, right? It was yellow, blue, red, white. Mm. had a polo shirt to go with it. And the pants or, or the shorts were like nylon, and it was killing me. I'll tell you why I was killing me, because every time I wore it, I got a different girl's phone number. What? Anyway, went to the amusement park, got a girl's phone number there, and she wanted to hang out with me and, and the homies and her friends, and we get on a ride. The ride had a little bit of water on it. Baby girl put her head back onto my shirt on the white part, and 
she had that brown jello on her hair and ruined my fit. No. I will oh, never no. forgive her for it. But besides that, I want to know what fit did you guys have coming up that was just killing them? Once again, this is Jay Del Negro from the Don't Just Me podcast. Love the show, gentlemen. Appreciate all that you do. Wow. That's, uh, thank you, Jay Del Negro. And as soon as I saw East Coast correspondent, I was like, it can only be one of a few people, I think, uh, you know, who may have left mm-hmm. a, left voice mode for. So, yeah, thanks, Jay Del Negro. You can definitely check out the Don't Judge Me podcast with him and Nigel. Um, uh, so, yeah, look for that. Great show as well. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Jay, what about you, man? What do you what kind of what styles back in the day? Uh, what clothes mm-hmm. back in the day, you know, were your favorite that I knew I was killing them with? Yeah. But they, uh, I'd have to think about it, but there's one that really comes to mind. When the Jordan 13s came out, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I managed to cop a pair. And those were the blue the blue and gray Jordan 13s. At the same time, uh, Jordan, Jordan and I guess Nike, they released, a, I guess, the whole outfit. I, I knew back in the day, every time they released the shoe, they released the a whole sports type outfit to go with it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there was this blue this blue kind of it was like a zipper type it wasn't a jersey but it was like this zipper short sleeve I don't know jacket or whatever you want to call it Mm -hmm. and white pants like white zipper so it kind of it kind of looks like your uh, your pregame warm up suit Mm -hmm. um so they had that. I copped the I copped the whole outfit. So everything was just in sync and coordinated. Was that about and a three hundred dollar three hundred dollar store trip or what? No, no, it, it didn't cost that much back in the day. Well, yeah, that's, that's I'm gonna say it was probably it, in total it might have been like two fifty. So yeah, yeah. you're, you're kind of right. You're kind of right. Close. Uh, close. So about two fifty for that. Okay. And. This was back in high school. I, I get to high school. No, I get to class that day. Nobody had it on mm-hmm. because back in the day, you go four o'clock in the morning, get your shoes, come back, go to class. So, uh, yeah, I just knew I was killing them with that, and I wore that that outfit like I ain't gonna say every week, but every mm-hmm. weekend I was mm-hmm. rocking that outfit, going to going to the mall and everything like that. So yeah, I, I just knew I was killing them with it, man. Everybody wow. was kind of like envious of it. Yeah, yeah, so, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, I, I remember that outfit uh, that you had, and yeah, man, it's it's funny. Like you said, back in the day, you know, it was sort of different because a all this stuff wasn't as expensive. Even though Jordans were expensive back then they weren't as expensive as a new pair coming out now would be. You know what I'm saying? They're a little more now yeah, yeah. Uh, or a lot more and there's more specialized, et cetera. And yeah, they would put out an outfit, you know, that sort of matched, um, you know, sort of matched the style of some of the shoes that dropped. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was always, it was always interesting to see the pairs that you would come up with. Uh, and then also my cousin Fabian, who was also a Jordan sneakerhead, um, you know, would, would come up with uh, whenever the new Jays came out. So, that's cool and yeah I uh, and there's another thing mixed in there which I'll get into in mine I guess um, and I unfortunately you know my, my parents are like nah you're not getting these Jordans because they're too much uh, I think I had one or two pair of Jordans ever um, you know as a youngster and then and then you know I was able to buy some more when I got when I was grown and was making money um, but wow I would have to say there's there's a couple things. I do remember one Christmas uh, back in the day when MC Hammer pants were a thing. You know, they're big time style back in the day. I remember one Christmas getting a matching outfit with the shirt and the pants. These pants, y'all, these pants. If you know like what salmon pink slash orange looks like. So you got that color. And then I can't even remember, but it was salmon orange for the pants all the way from top to bottom, right? And then you had this yellow, black, and white, like random yellow, black, and white design scattered throughout the pants, uh, but with that salmon mm-hmm, color right. backdrop. Oh, I was bright. And then there was a white t-shirt, but it also had like that little salmon, yellow, black, and white design 
on the shirt and I can't remember what brand it was, you know, it was some brand from back in the day and, it, and knowing my parents, it was probably an off brand. Um, but it's still, <laughs> but Hey man, you it's know, it didn't matter. Colors. No, <laughs> it cross color, colors. cross color. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was the fake cross colors, whatever that was. I can't remember the name now. Um, but yeah, I remember getting that. Uh, I remember also, um, at one point getting, uh, getting a, I guess, what do you call it? Like overall, a pair of overalls from Skids, right? I remember that. This company I called Skids. Really yeah. And, and, and the, you know, the logo of Skids was, you know, like the car, uh, swerving or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. the street sign. The and so sign, these, yeah. yeah, these were like black and white, uh, checkerboard or, or something like that. Uh, skids overalls and people used to wear the, their overalls with either one clip on and one clip off or both clips off and let the clips just dangle back in the day. So I remember both of those outfits and I'd probably wear them like back to back days or, you know, I'd wear them like Thursday, Friday, because you always want to wear your best stuff on Fridays. Right. Um, right. almost every week. And, and it's funny because nowadays you think about that and you're like, man, how did I wear the same stuff like every week and nobody said anything? But that was the thing, you know, like yeah. now if you wear the same stuff, people will say, you know, people will try to clown you and say, oh, you don't have any clothes or blah, blah, blah. But back in the day, you know, you you could get away with wearing the same outfit once a week and and everybody understanding, you know, everybody having that general understanding that, oh, that's your you know, that's your that's your go to outfit. That's your Friday outfit or or whatever it is. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, that that was my thing back in the day. I think it was like middle school. I think that was middle school. Yeah, uh, back then. So those those were the things. I'm trying to think what else. I remember cross colors. Jabos. Yeah. Jabos. Yeah, Jabos. Cavariches. Jabos was the. That was our joint right there. And mm -hmm. I I used to. I can't say I had I had like one. I'm gonna say I had one official pair of Jabos. And then there was like this one shop, in, uh, yeah, in a few few towns over that sold like uh, Jabos for like thirty dollars, and they mm. had them in different colors. And we're like, hmm, thirty dollars Jabos because Jabos used to cost somewhere up to, upwards to eighty dollars. Yeah, they were expensive pants. Yeah, but this shop sold them for like thirty dollars, and they were selling like hotcakes, yeah, mm -hmm. like purple Jabos and orange Jabos. And <laughs> yeah. Any color under the sun, you know, as long yeah. as they had a little tag across the, uh, across the zipper. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's another funny thing. Um, you know, because I guess this may be sort of a intersectionality topic of, you know, sort of when the clothing culture changed, because that was a time then where you, you sort of tucked in your shirt or at least you tucked in the front where people could see your zipper, right? Your zipper cover. Because yeah, it had that horizontal tag for Jabos, had the vertical tag for Cavariches. Um, did Guess have a tag on there? I can't remember if Guess had a tag like that too. When Guess jeans back in the day, uh, but I know they had like a little triangle on the back of the pants. But um, yeah, man, it was it was the thing, and that's what that's what people used to wear their clothes like that. But then if you were wearing, like you said earlier, like your like your. Um, you know, like your basketball outfit or whatever, like your tracksuit, whatever. You let your you let your shirt tail out. You know, you let it hang. So you know, there's sort of like there's sort of like a clash in the culture. So you could either wear something, you know, you could either wear something and sort of, I don't know, sort of dress up if that makes any sense, and sort of tuck your shirt in so everybody could see that style and see the fashion, see the see the tag, see the label. But then you could draw also dress down. You know, where your friends could be dressed down a little differently and yeah, just have like the long baggy pants and shorts and shirt all out, you know, untucked, you know what I'm saying? And that would be the style and the ladies would love it. And a lot of times, most of those companies had a ladies version or girls version of, you know, a boy outfit, you know, with a little different flair on it. So that's funny, man. That's funny. Um, yeah, but when did that? Let's see here. I know that that was my middle school, you know, maybe into like the beginning of high school, maybe. So maybe like three years, four years. Um, for me, what about you? That was what, like, like late 80s to early, what, no. I guess early 90s, early 90s. Um, early to mid 90s. 
right? I don't know. What uh, what do you think? Was that about the same for you? Was that was that the middle school, high school era? Uh, high school, so like late nineties, late mm-hmm. uh, like nineties. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong then. Make my own money. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe the mid nineties. Other than that, I, yeah. Other than that, I mean, I just wore whatever my my parents got me. You know, it wasn't until mm-hmm. I started making my own money that I I was able to like buy Jordans on like a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. My my pops only got me one pair of Jordans, and I was like fourteen, and. Mm-hmm. Sh- that was like, no, nah, I couldn't, I couldn't have my my parents buy me nothing like that again. So I just started making my own yeah. money, and then, then I just started buying my own stuff. So yeah, that's when all the fashion and stuff came to came to play. Late nineties, yeah, mid to late 90s. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I, uh, wow, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, when I started, when I had my own little job and I started making a little money, I. I don't know. I could have bought that, bought like, you know, Jordan stuff like that. But I think, you know, this is the thing, man. I think when your parents at some point have told you over and over again, so many times, um, you know, this is, you know, you, you'd much rather, you'd be better off spending your money on X, Y, Z than just X. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Or you can get more for your money with this and that. So I think that's why I, when I did have my own money, I normally shied away from it because I saved it for other stuff that I wanted. Me, mainly video games or, uh, you know, toys or some other clothes that weren't like that expensive or some other shoes that, that weren't that expensive. Because I remember um, back in the day uh, was that I I wasn't a Michael Jordan fan. I liked his shoes, but I did not like him just because I was a Knicks fan and the Bulls and Knicks were were uh, were rivals. So it was always hard to, to, you know, for me, it felt like I was supporting the enemy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I bought his shoes, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. but I thought they were cool. You know what I'm saying? Like what could like who like what kid wouldn't think that they were cool back in the day? So 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 it was wild. So, I mean, I was the guy who had like the Patrick Ewing shoes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> or I had, or I had like you know the ponies or the Converse, um, and or like the other Nikes that weren't the Jordan Nikes, like the C Webs and stuff like that. So yeah, mm. so yeah, so ah, uh, back in the day, back in the day, yeah. We'll we will have an actual episode where we like get more into the sneakers and sneaker fandom, sneaker heads, mm. and you know, other cultures that sort of go along with that, like music and whatnot. Um, but that's a different show for a different topic for a different day. Um, but yeah, man, th- thank you for that question date, J Del Negro. And yeah, we want to know that same answer from other people out there who are listening, leave us a voicemail and let us know what you think about that thing. So, well, I mean, what else we got? That basically it had a lot of voicemail. Yeah, that was a lot of voicemails. I think that's that was the voicemail episode. Yeah, yeah, it was a voicemail <laughs> yeah, episode. Yeah. As we as we try to build out these intersectionality um, episodes, uh, you know, and try to mix that into our regular everyday life, uh, you know, which sometimes is pretty hectic. Uh, yeah, we're just trying mm-hmm. to build out. We want to get have the best content for y'all, and not just throw something out there just because you know it's record date. So. Yeah, so we'll we'll get some of these fleshed out and actually have something good for you, uh, you know, for the next couple episodes, a few episodes through. So, yeah, but um, what do we want to say? Uh, there was something that I totally just forgot. So today is Super Bowl Sunday. So by the time y'all hear this, uh, you know, obviously it'll be, you know, Super Bowl Sunday will have passed and you know, the champion will have been crowned. Um, Jay was hoping that his Saints would be able to make it. Uh, unfortunately, they did not. Uh, I knew my Giants weren't going to make it from the beginning of the season, so I was fine with that. But the Texans had their chance, but they lost as well, weren't able to make it. So today we have the Chiefs versus the 49ers. Are you rooting for anybody or you just don't care? Uh, I don't care. I mean, if I had to pick one, maybe KC. I don't know. Yeah. 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 But honestly, I don't care who wins. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to these commercials if they're going to be good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Same here. And I hope that, you know, it's a good game. It's about it. You know, just go hang out with some people, uh, throw down a little bit of food and, 
yeah, uh, enjoy the games and hope game and hopefully the commercials. And yeah, I am rooting for the Chiefs just because Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, I just I just like him as a player. You know, I I don't. Even though when he played in college, he destroyed my college team, TCU. He played for Texas Tech, destroyed them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, threw up a lot of yards against them. Was a great player in college, and has seemed to be that in in the NFL so far. So, yeah, man. So I'm sort of rooting for them, but you know, in the end of it all, it's not my team, either one of them. So whatever, man. As long as it's a good one. And this time, it's not the Patriots. So we know that it won't. It will be a you know a new champion, if you will, this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, on that note, uh, we'll do a little bit of love box tapping and we'll get up on out of here. Um, so, Jay will cue the music uh, as he normally does. Great. And, yeah, we'll uh, tell you how to tap your love box. So, uh, if you, um, you know, if you have, have uh, if you have constant battles with your mom, about what the best version of Godzilla was, tap your love box. Mm-hmm. Damn. Huh. If you are hoping for a wardrobe malfunction in today's <laughs> Super Bowl, tap your love box. <laughs> who is the, is it, who is it, Jennifer Lopez and who? Or is it just Shakira. J- and Shakira, wow. Nice, nice. Some Miami staples for a game in Miami, so. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'll be doing any more wardrobe malfunction. If there are, I think they have built in enough time ahead now that they will cut the show. Yeah, the before. delay. delay yeah. Before. They'll straight delay it or they'll cut it to a commercial. Um, I wonder if they have commercials like pre planned just in case something like that happens. That'd be interesting to find out. Uh, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So uh, <laughs> let's see here. Like, um, oh, a titty go to a Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> oh man, it, it, it could happen. It could happen. Oh wow. Okay. So speaking of wardrobe, if you have that one fit from back in the day, like J. Dale Negro's combination of pastel colors that got all the ladies, tap your lip box. <laughs> I think those were all pastel colors. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. You think Tom Brady should retire after this season? Happy Love Rock. Along with Drew Brees. I mean, it's. I think they're getting old. Yeah. They're getting, they, up, they're getting up there, I mean. They are getting up there for sure. You know? But they're still playing, like, at a high level. Like, it's so crazy. So. They are. They are, man. They are. You know? Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta. Sometimes you just gotta say, let me go out on top. You know? Yeah. Wow. So crazy. Got records, so. crazy records. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh well, we'll see next season. We'll see what happens. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, yeah, we'll definitely see. Um, I had one and I totally forgot it. Uh, if you are going to use some hooks, rubs, and spices on some brisket, chicken wings, uh, 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 Atomic buffalo turds, which people like to call poppers as well, bacon wrapped somethings, um, hamburgers, you know, your bratwurst, your nachos, tacos, whatever for the Super Bowl or any other family celebration, tap your love box. Mm-hmm. I sure did. I still got cabinets full of hooks, original bottle design, and the, the new. Nice, nice, nice. You got the old school in the new school. Uh, old school, new school. Um, if you're happy, it's a uh, Black History Month. Tap your love box. If you really don't care because you celebrate Black History Year, <laughs> tap right. your love box. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty good. If you um, saw that, uh, you know, one of our podcast pals, Random Ramblings with Rob, went to WrestleMania um, and he, you know, had the strength to not run on stage or run into the ring and 
you know, try to throw somebody into the turnbuckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap your little box because I was surprised, man. He he uh, sort of kept his composure, even though it looked like yep. he had a good time. So. Uh, and I guess my last love box. Tap your love box for for Kobe and his daughter and all the people that lost their lives on the uh, on that that tragic helicopter crash. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's not a it's a pretty sad situation. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't talk about it much, but yeah, it's um, yeah. Respect to them. Yeah, it's very sad, and yeah, much respect uh, to them and their families. You know, um, prayers for healing to them and their families, and anybody else that was affected by it. Uh, you know, um, and was a fan the of world. his. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. the world. Yes. So, anyways, uh, on that note, I want to go ahead and tell the people where they can find us. All right, people, find us <clears throat> Twitter, Instagram. Hashtag Black Pod, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, Anchor, Spreaker, YouTube, Sound, uh, what do you call that place? Spotify. <laughs> Email those topics, hashtag Black Alpine, gmail.com. You got some intersectional, intersectionality topics that mm-hmm. you may think of and you want us to delve into. Send them our way. You can do it at the email or you can just call us 3853-OAKPC or 3853-2572 hit up hooksrubs.com or etsy.com get yourself hooks rubs spices you yep. know uh, yep springtime's coming people gonna be queuing every every weekend every day mm-hmm. you need yourself some of that hooks stay tuned for that that hook soul glow yes indeed it's in the, it's in the making it's in the working works. on the formula mm-hmm. Working, working on the formula. Get you good and tasty, and sop up your your meats and everything. Make them all juicy, like. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And if you know of a good quality co-packer that can actually package the food for me, <laughs> so I don't have to, you know, take the time and go to a a, good, a kitchen, a commercial kitchen, and do all the bottling. <laughs> Please. Give us, send us a message. Let us know. Send it to hashtag Blackout Podcast or send it to Hooks, Rose, and Spices because we are looking to find a good co packer, which is basically somebody that does all the bottling and labeling for you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, they could do it on a much larger scale uh, than, you know, a one man show, pretty much. So, yeah, we definitely want to know, definitely want to hear, hear from them. Um, we talked to somebody just recently who only does little like packets like if you know like the McCormick taco seasoning packet they just do Mm -hmm. stuff like that and they're like yeah we don't do bottles we do those and I was like you've seen my package you've seen my product why didn't you tell me that before I came to meet with you so they're probably obviously trying to sell me on their goods so yeah but that could actually be pretty good though Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah I think it could you know yeah it's like what if you could actually get hooked up with one of these restaurants like one of these fast food restaurants and then they make like little packets of hooks to mm-hmm. so you could season your own stuff see that would be nice actually that you know what cool. oh yeah like little salt pack or like little sugar packets yeah, that go yeah. on the table get your that'd be hooks. interesting that'd be interesting uh now there is a restaurant in the dallas area uh, in dallas called cutie pies pizza uh, i don't know if i talked mm-hmm. about it before but um i may have but they use hook shrub seasoning on some of their cocktails to rim the glass. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also, you know, they also use it, I believe, in some of the recipes. So, yeah. So if you're in Dallas, check out Cutie Pie's Pizza. I believe it's right off McKinney somewhere um, over there in Dallas. And, yeah, check them out and tell them that, you know, the hashtag Blackout Podcast sent you. But if they don't know who that is, tell them. Uh, the Hooks Rub family sent you, <laughs> and you want to try one of those one of those uh, spiced cocktails, <laughs> if you will. It's the the rim is uh, spiked up with some Hooks Rub season. It looks pretty dope. Go in there. Hashtag Blackout Podcast sent me. Who? Who? Hashtag Blackout Podcast. <laughs> Say what? I don't know them. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, also there's a couple of locations here, uh, food trucks here that that use it on some of their 
some of their stuff. Um, the Cluck Truck that does a lot of chicken, chicken wraps, and some Cajun red fries. Pretty dope. Uh, and then this uh, fellow I know named Pete who runs a truck called Dogs and Lynx. Um, and he does some hooks rub pulled pork over some of his hot dog links. So it's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, guess I'll holler at you later. Blacking out. All right, then. Peace. Blacking out. God damn that boy can sing. You must be crazy. He good. You must be crazy.